Hi, I'm Marnie and welcome to Exploring Colors. Today we are going to use paint and very special markers to make a wonderful landscape. It's going to be a landscape in the style of pointillism. So let's open our box and take a few items out. We're going to start with, we're going to need our paints again. And we will need our little pouch. Yours might be a different color. Mine is yellow. And we have some thick paper. We're going to take that out. We used that last week. And let's see if we need anything else. I don't think so because I think I put a lot of my materials into my uh, pouch yesterday, the last week. And um, we're also going to, I'm going to use some markers that I actually had from the very first box. You don't have to use them. In addition, please ask your grown-up to help you get a jar or a, a glass or a cup of water because we're going to be painting. And we're also going to need some paper towels or napkins. Um, so a landscape, what is a landscape? We're going to take one piece of paper. Um, I gave you lots of extra so you can practice, but we are going to um, we are going to actually put our paper down the long way, the horizontal way. And let's talk a little bit about what a landscape is. A landscape is something that is outside. So it could be many different things, right? If you are looking outside, it might be the ocean or it might be a garden or it could be the mountains or trees. It could be a forest. Um, you could come up with lots of different ideas and you should today draw and paint whatever comes to your mind, whatever you would like to do that's a landscape. Um, and there's so many different ideas, right? So we last week did a portrait, which was a picture of a person, right? And I did a self-portrait. And in it, we did um, it in the style of pointillism also, which were lots of dots. And the dots were different colors, and they came together to kind of show different features on the face. Well, today we're gonna try a similar thing with landscape. So let's get started. Um, we are gonna open up our little pouch and take a few things out of it. Um, I have my chunky pencil. And I have my Q-tips that we used for painting dots. And I also have um, this paintbrush that I cleaned that I used last week. And then there's another item in here. Um, you're going to see the spongy brush. We're not going to use that quite yet. So now I'm going to zipper up my uh, case. And the first thing I'm going to do is take my pencil. And I'm going to think of what I might want to draw for my landscape. I'm going to do a couple different lines with my pencil that I can erase, but um, I want you to think of a special place, a place that you love to go to. Maybe it's the playground, maybe it's the beach. I love to go to the beach. Um, I also love gardens. I love to be outside and I love looking at beautiful landscapes that are grass and trees. And I'm thinking maybe that's what I'm going to do today. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. But please feel free to do whatever landscape you really want to draw. And you can try a few different ones. So the first thing we have to do when we're drawing a landscape is think about a horizon line. And the horizon line is where the land meets the sky. So I think I'm going to do a garden with trees and flowers. Um, and I'm going to think, I can close my eyes if I want to, because sometimes that helps me picture in my mind the image that I want. And if you're struggling a little bit, you can look out the window, or you can look in some books, or you can look at photographs to get ideas. There are lots of different ways to get ideas. But I'm going to do an imaginary landscape. So I'm going to think about um, maybe it is just grass, and I'm going to do a line across where the sky meets the land. And I'm going to put in some trees, and I can always erase lines. And this is more, this is the tree trunk, and then maybe it's filled with beautiful leaves. 
and maybe I'll do another tree in the background and sometimes they're split they have different branches but I'm just going to do a, a rough drawing of kind of where the lush leaves would be on the tree and maybe I'll have a path and I'm going to and you can erase if you don't like how you draw something you can always erase different parts so don't feel badly like I'm not sure I like that line so I'm going to change it and um, it's better to try things it's better much better to try things and then correct them if you don't like them but too often we play it safe and we just keep drawing things we know how to draw over and over and over again and we don't learn that way right we learn by trying new things so um, I'm going to do some another uh, little path here where I'm going to do like flowers so I'm going to kind of draw them in sometimes in the summertime when the flowers are blooming you see these really beautiful uh, I'm going to have it follow the path of the, uh, the little road or the little path and this is so that I know those are flowers and then I'm going to erase this line that wouldn't go into the tree and maybe the, there's another tree this is the tree trunk but you can kind of think about like what you would draw and we could try if we have time we can try to do a second one too um, but I am just giving it a rough outline and maybe the Sun is here and maybe I have another row of other flowers and maybe these flowers come up a little bit and maybe these are, I'm gonna make them pointier. <laughs> and you could put animals if you want in. Mine's more of a garden and a pathway, and then I'm gonna have lots of beautiful grass too, and make a beautiful sky. Now, I'm gonna put some clouds in the sky, so I'm just gonna kind of put them in, because I wanna keep those white. And I can just play with this a little bit. Now, maybe there's some more flowers here. So I'm doing kind of like different pathways and they all kind of lead out this way because I want to try to imply movement. Sometimes when you use a diagonal line, it makes it look like there's movement. But I'm not gonna put any people in this. This is just gonna be um, just a landscape without people. Okay. So I think this is good enough. I mean, it's a very rough sketch and yours can be rough too. Maybe I'm gonna show you on another piece of paper. Maybe you will try one where it's the ocean and it could be the sand and then the ocean, the horizon line where maybe this is the ocean and then maybe you could have big waves, fluffy white waves that crash onto the sand and I can erase some of the sand lines here and maybe big clouds, could even have a boat maybe, right? And then make it go further out. So maybe my line for the ocean goes further. But I'm just showing you this so you can see, and maybe here is an umbrella, somebody's reading, and a maybe a towel, part of a towel that's in the picture. But just to give you an idea, you can do lots of different landscapes, right? And you don't have to put people in them. If you do put a person in, that's okay. Um, but I'm concentrating right now just on the landscape. Okay, so now I think we're ready. I'm gonna put my beach seat over here. We have time, we'll do, um, I'm gonna try to clean this up a little bit. Do you guys ever have a messy desk when you're creating? <laughs> okay, so um, we are gonna open this up for the paints. And I think I forgot one last thing. Let's see. Well, we can use our dotty markers also. Um, I didn't bring mine out today, but you can use them if you want. But I could also use my regular markers that I have from my first box. So you can decide if you wanna take out your circle markers that we used last week, or just your regular markers from the first box. 
Okay, so let's get started. Um, I think for, I'm gonna make little circles and the dotting markers have really big circles, right? So this may work nicely with these regular ones, but you can use the dotting markers too. I'm gonna try to do some green circles and circles you just go round and round and round, right? Or you could just do little dots like this that's okay too. I'm going to make one section the bigger circles and one section the littler circles. And then there's some more. Maybe these are bigger circles. You can have fun with this because all this would have some green in it, but I'm going to shade. I'm going to put um, some other colors in too. And you'll see we have paints that we can use. Okay. So I'm using these little markers, but you can use the big ones if you want to. Instead, if you can't find these, you can use either one and you would just stamp. And remember last week we said, if you ever use the stamp circle markers and paint doesn't come out, you just have to keep, keep hitting it down and eventually all the paint goes into the pad. These markers you don't have that problem with. So I'm adding some yellow to some of it. And I'm also going to add some yellow to the sun. And sometimes the sun has rays, so I'm going to kind of do a few rays going down. But I'm not going to go into the clouds. Okay. Now I'm going to use some of the blue, I think, in the background here. And I have a lot of white background still. And don't worry about that because when we go in with the paint, we can totally fix all of that. I'm gonna do just little dots, little blue ones, because I like different sizes in the different sections. So this is really the grass. Um, and it's gonna come together. The colors will start to blur and come together. And um, now I'm gonna start with maybe the, um, tree. So the tree, I'm going to do kind of medium circles up the tree trunk. And this one, maybe some bigger ones. And if you have your big dotty markers that were in this box, this is perfect for this one. You can make really big circles and you can use imaginary colors. You can maybe make the tree purple. <laughs> that might be fun, right? It doesn't have to be real, um, realistic colors for things. I'm going to put some purple in this tree. Making some bigger circles. And you can take your time. You can have fun with this. I mean, there are, it really isn't a science. Um, you're kind of playing with color and dots and your eye will start to move them together. Okay, and this one I'm going to do like little teeny dots. Okay. And you'll see how fun it, it will become when we start to put paint in. So the path, I think I'm going to make the path... Um, I'm going to try some yellow and some orange on the path. This is the road that people walk on. Okay, and there are no rules. Whoops, that almost slipped. <laughs> okay, and different size circles. And it'll be fun with the paints. We can go over the marker, whether you're using the big um, spongy dot markers that were in the box or whether you're using these it's your choice um, and then we can have fun with um, the paint and you can do the whole thing with just paint or just markers too but I like mixing making big circles on this I'm gonna make teeny circles in the back sometimes it looks like Part of the tree leaves are in the front and some are in the back. So I'm going to make the back smaller underneath and then bigger circles 
in the front. And I'm going to leave a little bit of the V in the trunk so that it looks like it's sky. But right now it looks like a whole bunch of circles all over the place. And look at this, I forgot this tree. So we need to use a little brown on that. Okay, so now um, maybe the path has a little bit of brown too. And if you put the dots really close together, it almost looks like a line. And you can do that on one side if you want. I can make one side a little bit darker than the other. And my little dots are starting to become dashes, but that's okay. And maybe I'll do that up the tree trunk. It's kind of like little dashes. And it helps to kind of um, outline the different things in your landscape. Okay, so now I think we're ready to do some of the flowers. I'm going to use red on these. Maybe I'll leave the center for a different color. And some will be smaller and some will be bigger. And this section, I'm just doing these red flowers. And you can experiment. You can try different size dots and doing them uh, larger, smaller, Okay, and then the other one, um, I think I'll make those yellow. And then I can come in with paint to add different colors in each. This is very good exercise for your hands. <laughs> okay, and then down here, maybe those will be, um, Maybe orange. And this is just the first color in the flowers. We're going to add some other colors too. And the paints with the Q-tips are really great to do that. Okay. Dot, 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 dot. <laughs> it's almost like a song, right? As you're doing this. And if I want to put some of the orange into these yellow flowers, I can put a little bit. Just make it a little more decorative. But you can see your eye starts to meld some of these colors. Okay, now we didn't do anything yet with this area, which I'm thinking maybe very small, just green dots. And my dots were getting messy, so they became dashes. I'll go on the outline. Maybe I'll leave some of it white to just use paint. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. So this, um, you can't really see it all yet, right? You just have to trust that it's going to work out. And you have to remember what you want each little section to be. And you want each one to be a little bit different. So this is also the grass. Okay. So now I didn't do the sky, so I'm going to take my blue and I'm going to not, I'm going to go around part of the clouds and do a bunch of dots. And I think I'm going to have the sky come in part of the tree. I'm going to leave the cloud. And here's something that's kind of fun with the sky. You can make some of it, um, you can make some of the, um, the little blue dots, um, you can put more in some areas to make it darker. And then it could be lighter, because sometimes the sky near the clouds has some lighter blue and darker blue. It almost looks like um, the clouds are moving, like we're shaping the clouds a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna leave some of it white because I wanna come in with paint. And I think we're in pretty good shape. I'm going to give this tree trunk a little bit of blue dots. Okay. 
So it's very dotty right now. But we are going to now take our paints. And if you did this with your bigger markers, the big uh, stamp markers, then maybe you didn't have as many dots that you needed to make. But you can like try one with those and try one this way. And it's kind of fun to do both. Okay, I'm gonna open, this takes a little bit of practice to open up all of these paint tubs. Okay, and remember last week I took a piece of paper towel and I put my paints on it to keep my table a little neater. It will get messy though, and that's okay. So, I don't have my little um, plate. I threw it out, it got too messy. So I'm gonna use paper towel. I'm just gonna take out like, four right now because I don't know if I need more. Okay, and I'm gonna start on the tree. I'm gonna try some green dots. And it's gonna you're gonna see it's gonna to start to come together. And I just poke it in. I don't really need water on the Q-tip. And I'm gonna to go to this tree too and give that a little green, but I would like the trees to look a little different. So I may put another color in one of these. And I'm gonna leave some white. I, I think it looks better if you don't cover it completely. Okay, and we have this side too, and you could put some of the green dots really close together and some maybe aren't as close. And then I also have this tree right here. Okay, and I have some of this grass. I'm gonna do a little bit of green dots. And if I keep, if I dip it in once and then I start to do this, what you'll see is it gets lighter. And I, I like the way that looks. So I'm not gonna dip it in so often. I'm gonna do some lighter greens too. And then if I want the edge to be a little darker, I can put the dots closer together. some green. I, I'm just doing like very close dots on one side of the green grass. So it looks like it has some volume. It looks like it curves around. And I can come back and add more, but this is a work in progress. Okay, I'm going to put this down. I kind of mangled my Q-tip. Okay, so now I'm gonna come in, and I think where I had the red flowers, I'm gonna try to add some bigger red dots to some of it, just maybe one side of the flower. They're, they look almost like poppies. And I find if I do the grass and also the flowers now on one side, it kind of gives it a little shape. Great. And what I may do is um, maybe I'll do a red dot inside of these flowers, just one red dot. I want these flowers to look a little different than those flowers. Okay, so I can turn around my pipe, my uh, Q-tip, and I can use the other side. So um, I don't know if the white's going to work so well, but let's see. If I kind of go into I'm not going to dip it back into the white because it has some red on it now, but it kind of makes this a little bit pinky, which I think looks cool. So I'm just going to smear the white with my little dots around. Okay, so now um, the path. The path is brown. So let's go into the brown. And I'm going to do one side. A little more one side all the way back now you can do this without the markers if you want and just all paints if you want to it just will go faster if you do markers and paint and it adds more colors and maybe I'll do a little bit more in the middle and the tree trunk has brown in it too so I'm gonna do the left side. Since I'm doing a lot of these outlining on the left side, I'm going to do that with everything on the left side. 
and sometimes it starts to smear like this. Um, it's okay if that happens, but you really want to try to do dots. But I have to keep adding. And I like to go over the purple dots a little bit. Maybe I'll do a few dots here, but it will start to make it look solid. And on the left side of this tree trunk, and then I have the left side of this branch, and then I have this one. Okay. So now I have another side here and these yellow flowers, let's see if we can add some yellow to them. And you can see I try to keep one color on the Q-tip and not mix it because if I put this brown into the yellow, what would happen? <laughs> it would turn, right? It would turn my paint a different color that maybe I don't want. Now I'm gonna try a little yellow into the red, but I'm not gonna dip it back into the yellow. I'm just gonna see what happens. And it's fun to experiment and see. Okay, so now I think it'd be kind of fun to do uh, the sky. So I'm gonna go into the blue and right around the clouds, I'm gonna do a lot of blue paint dots. I'm gonna start with that so that I can define the clouds. And then I can move some dots around. And it gets, um, you can see some of the lighter blue. I wanna make it a really blue sky, so I'm gonna do a lot of dots. I also think it'll help define this. And sometimes what I do is I go back to something, I let it dry, I come back, I do more. If you're getting tired, you can do that. You just have to clean up and uh, shut your paint so they don't dry up and your markers, but that's okay if you want to do that. Now we have this, um, we have our paintbrush too, which I'm gonna dip into my water and the paintbrush is gonna give us a bigger uh, dot or dash. It, it's um, a flat paintbrush, so it won't be a perfect circle. It'll be more of a dash, but we can try some of that too. So I'm gonna go in, I think with the blue, into just one side of the grass here. And um, I'm gonna put my brush in the water and then I'm gonna just pick up some of the blue. I don't want it to be too dark. So I'm gonna to try to just pick it up. And then a little bit here, and I'm not dipping it into the blue again. I'm just kind of using some of the paint that was here. And on the left side, so it looks, um, and I can come back in and get some of the blue and do that. And now I'm gonna clean my brush. We always give it a bath before um, in the water before we uh, go into another color. Now I'm gonna go into the green because these flowers, I think, need a little more green around them. And the brush is a little different than using the Q-tip. The Q-tip gives you a great circle, right? The brush, it's more um, of a dash and also it is easier to kind of have translucent or see-through colors. Um, the brush, you know, you add more water, you add water to it, so it changes it a little bit. Now, what would happen, now I'm cleaning my brush, if I put some yellow into here? I think it kind of would be fun because yellow and blue makes green, right? And this is the grass, so let's see what happens if it turns it kind of greeny. I want each section to look a little different. And I could add um, a little bit of yellow into this, just a little bit. So it's getting very colorful. Now sometimes in the trees there's a little yellow too, right? Like a highlight, so I'm gonna try a little bit of that too. And this goes a little faster using the paintbrush. 
And as we spoke about, the marks are not as uh, round, so I can always go back with my uh, Q-tip and do like better circles afterwards. I want this tree to look a little different than that one. I may put like one or two yellows, but maybe I'll do five yellows. I'll move that around. But now I want to do another color. Um, maybe on this one, I'm going to do purple now that I've cleaned my brush. And let's see what happens. Oh, it's a magical tree. <laughs> and sometimes like I'm mixing some of the yellow with a purple. It's getting a little brownie. But I'm going to clean my brush. Okay, so now I'm going to try white. What would happen if I did white in this area? This is where I have some grass. It doesn't show up so well, but it was fun to try. And I could try white also in the sky, just on a little bit of it to see if it makes it a light blue, which it kind of does, right? A little bit. Okay, so now let's see what would happen if we added a little more green in here. I'm going to try to do little, I'm going to use the corner of my brush. Teeny, I'm going to go around some of the flowers. So I want to, I want to have a little green, but I want them to be very small. And I can do a little more green in here too and a little bit up here with the yellow flowers. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back in and take another Q-tip. We gave you a few extras, so you're in good shape. And you can always use Q-tips from home if you run out. Okay, so now I think what I'd like to do is maybe define some more circles, like in the tree. just felt it needed to be a little greener. So did you do this one with uh, the, the markers, the regular markers, the, or with the stamps this week? Yours will look different depending on which one you used. Um, we can also, I'm going to put this aside now. Now, if you want to, when it's dry, you can outline some of these things or not. Um, I'm going to leave this up here for the moment, and I'm going to look at my beach scene, and I'm going to see what I could do. I, ha I still have some of these that I can go into. What if I just did, I'm going to show you on this, like, use paint. And you can do that too, where I'm gonna, this is the ocean, and this is where it gets like fluffy, where it crashes against the sand. And see how my paint is starting to uh, kind of leave my Q-tip, and it's much lighter. But I think when the water, I've looked at the water on the ocean a lot, and uh, when it crashes down, when the waves start rolling, there's like a white area, and there's an area that um, it's very dark blue, right? It, it starts to change, and it has different ripples. And sometimes the waves roll, so I'm going to do different lines of dark blue. And you can really look at something. You can look at photos to get ideas to see where it's darker or lighter. Okay, so now I'm gonna dip this into the white and I'm gonna try to create like a light blue section here. Now it's white on white, so it doesn't come up that well. But I wanted the texture of the paint too and the white would be in the clouds a little bit, right? I don't have to fill them all in, I can just do a little bit. Now I'm gonna go back um, to the blue and I'm gonna kinda go into the white that I just, the clouds, and I'm gonna go around them. I'm not gonna dip back into the blue, I'm just gonna use the light blue and suggest 
just going around the clouds. And I'm experimenting, and I hope you'll experiment too, because some of this, we don't know how it's gonna look. We kind of play and we try things. Now, sometimes there's a little bit of green uh, in the ocean too, so I'm gonna put a little green. And sometimes the edge, right where it crashes before the big white waves is dark. So I'm gonna make that dark. And you can make it dark by putting the dots very close together. And when this dries, I can also do dots with my marker. So you can come back to it again. And I'm gonna go around the big white wave. Okay. And I'm gonna make little dots. I'm gonna sit here and talk to you and make teeny little white dots in the sky. <laughs> this gets lots of feelings out, doing all these bangings, right? People in your family may ask, what is going on? Okay, I need um, one more. My hands got a little messy, but that's okay. We'll wash up after. Um, I'm going to do the beach and that's going to be yellow. The sand is kind of brownie yellow, right? And I'm leaving a lot of white because the sand is very light. And I'm just going to try to fill in this space. Okay, I'm going to go into, I'm going to make maybe the outline of the umbrella. Sometimes they have lines that go down umbrellas, right? And sometimes there's a little bit of brown in the sand, so I'm just going to not dip in again and just put a little bit into the sand. And maybe I'll make the umbrella red. So on the left side, I'm gonna make the dots a little closer together. And then as the paint goes away, it's lighter. And I can make a stick uh, red or another color. I can use my paintbrush too. Make sure it's clean. My hands are getting so messy. And maybe I'll go in with the black for a couple dots. And maybe the outside, these are kind of dashes. And sometimes there's a little bit of a shadow that's cast, so maybe I'll put that. And I'm gonna make my towel green. Maybe a little more green into the ocean. And the sky could have a little purple in it, right? Why not? So the brush is definitely making this go faster. And if you get tired, you can use your brush. And you can even make it very watercolory, very translucent when I and I'm using the big part of the brush now to play with this. And maybe a little blue. Now that got a little too dark for me. So I'm gonna rinse my brush and try to pull some of the color into this part. And I didn't do the boat yet, but I can also go over that with white or another color. But this is how we learn. Sometimes when we try something and even if we don't like it, we're like, how can I change it? How can I make it different? So I clean my brush, I go in with a little white and I'm gonna break it up a little bit, make it a little lighter. Okay. And the sailboat, uh, usually uh, the sail is white 
and maybe I'll make the boat red. And the sail needs to be defined a little bit, so I'm going to use my the corner of my brush in black. And just on the left side here. And maybe a little bit more. Let me use a teeny bit of black right there. And then I'm going to go into some blue. So now it's really dark right there. I'm doing more of the dark on the left side of things. But this gives you an idea. Now where the the um, fluffy white part of the waves crashing meets the sand, I'm going to come in with a little bit of brown. And I can always smooth that out. I'm going to add some water so that it's not as dark. And little dots. Oops! I'm <laughs> getting all excited. And now I'm going to put some more white. And I can move it around a little bit. And I can do dots once this dries again. Now the umbrella has red, but I'm going to use some of the orange marker just to kind of give it some another color. I think it'll be interesting. And maybe a little bit of orange in the sand. And I'm going to try not to go where I painted because I want my marker to stay orange. And I can try that on there. So this gives you an idea. Now, if I want to go over the clouds a little bit with the blue dots, I can just to make sure they're defined, that you can see them. And I can do teeny little dots going round and round so they're more obvious. And then I could do dots close together. And sometimes the sky looks like it has swirls, right? Swirls of blue and white. And I'm going to, where the sea meets the sky, do a line of blue dots. And then maybe I will do a line too, where the sand and the water meets. And then I can come out a little bit if I want. So these are just examples of, um, of a garden using pointillism or of an ocean, um, a seascape. These are landscape seascapes. Um, but it's so much fun to do this and to play. And when you're done, I want you to close your paint up because you will use it again. And this is really easy to um, put back into your little box. We did this last week, right? To make sure I open it. I like to keep it in, in this little box. I find it's a little neater. And if you used your big stampy markers, put those back. I have my Q-tips that are all um, use that I'm going to throw out and I'm going to wash my paintbrush and change my water and then I'm going to put my regular markers away and it, I'm taking time to show you how to clean up because I think it's really make sure all your marker tops are on tight it's really important to take care of art supplies because you want them to last this one I didn't shut properly you want them to last so every time you want to play with something, it's in good shape. So I'm going to put, um, and you can use it, and, and it didn't dry up. Um, I'm going to put my pencil back in my case and my Q-tips back in. And once I wash my brush, I'm going to put that back in too. 
Let's see if it's clean. It's pretty clean at this point, but I may run some soap and water through it and, and leave it on a paper towel to dry and then put it in my pouch. And uh, you have some extra paper if you want to do something else. But I think these are really fun and I may try some more and I hope that you will um, you will try a few because we gave you a little bit of extra paper and please put up your creation um, on Instagram. Have your grown up help you and put the hashtag exploring colors and we can't wait to see what you did and wait till you see what we do next week. Have a great week.